This video, we're going to take an old refrigerator compressor and turn it into a drill powered air compressor. Keep watching. This one's out of a little mini fridge and we've completely gutted it. And uh, go watch the video on that if you haven't seen that. Or if you're coming from that video to see this, you'll know where we are. And we're left with this. This particular one actually fried the motor. Um, so when you plugged it in, everything, it wouldn't do anything, no sound, no nothing. So the piston assembly, valve assembly is still good. The rest is junk. So the, uh, the electric motor has been removed and we're just left with this. We we'll still have the uh, the rotor left on the motor, but that doesn't matter. So I'm going to start off by I need to make something to mount it to. So I got a quarter inch piece of steel right here. I need I want something heavy, um, something that gives good weight to it. And then I got another plate that I've made up that will attach at a right angle like this, and be able to mount this and have good weight on the bottom, so it just doesn't when you're actually using it a drill on it, it just doesn't flop over. And then right here we're left with the uh, the main shaft that you, you this used to mount like this and then there's a hole in there that's actually not drilled in the center it's actually drilled in an angle and so as this rotates the this sits down in oil oil is actually forced up and thrown outwards and spun up and spun into this bearing surface into here and then into this bearing surface right here and then dripped out the front right here to lubricate everything in there just kind of splashed around so that's how it lubricates itself. So what we'll do, there's still a hole right here that also pulled in oil, is this will just be a manually lubricated item now where you just put a couple drops of oil in here once in a while and go from there. So let's continue to build this, let's, let's start going. This is an uncharted territory, I've never seen anybody else even attempt to build one of these, so let's go. So I just took a spare this is a 5 16 nut driver, 8 millimeter, and I wanted this part off of it. I could have taken this off a bunch of stuff. This is just an old worn out one. And I'm actually going to install this on here. This is my fastest spinning drill at about 3000 RPM. Um, I would love to have this so I could actually just put it in there and this will just clip on and just stay on. I could you know, hold, make something just hold the trigger and it, it would just go. So if you've ever tried to weld something in straight, you know that the welder will pull it. And so I'm about 25 thousandths out right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to counteract the pulling. So I'm actually not going to get this perfectly straight in there. I'm going to try to, right there, it is actually pushing up. So this is benting, bent up. So I'm going to take the low side right here and put a weld. And what it should do is actually pull itself up. And I'm going to try to counteract this going all skiwampus with welds. So let's see. I don't know if that pulled up as much as I wanted it to. Nope. So attaching this little piece like I wanted to was a failure because I didn't even realize, but that's cast iron. This is a cast iron crank. You can see back here, you can see that it's cast. And so it just cracked right off, busted right off. So I went about brazing it. So I just ended up, I tried brazing this one. The, cent, the hole in the center isn't centered. So with brazing, everything's kind of liquid. So everything's kind of being able to move. So I ended up just taking a socket that would fit over it and just getting the socket. And so now I can just use um, just a drive bit like this and jam that in there and, and that'll work for that. Now we need to get the air out. So here's your air outlet. And I was thinking about how to attach a fitting to that. And I wanted, um, this is a quarter inch NPT. Uh, that's, what, that's what I want on there so I can just attach um, standard fittings to it. And so to screw that on, I was looking at different things and I got this worn out one that no longer seals good. And I should be able to just braze that on there. Um, this side's completely just boogered, boogered up, not usable anymore, but the threads are still good. So braze this onto this pipe and then I'll be able to screw on whatever I want, wherever I want. So we'll go about brazing this on to this and go from there. Perfect. 
So I got a frame just welded all the way around it, welded to this bottom plate. And then the main, main assembly is just screwed in with two screws. But it's nice and secure now. I'll put a quick release fitting. And I'm going to position this about right here. And I just took a uh, an old carb cleaner can and bent it up into a shroud that'll go just around my piston area just to protect dust from getting on it. And then we just have a, uh, a piece of foam that we're just going to jam down in there. I'll just slide this on. Around the side, fasten that um, with some bolts. And then to fix this, we have just a little bracket made that will just slip around that and mount to some original mounting holes right here as well. And that'll just keep that from moving, but you can still operate the quick release from the top. And then we'll build some sides to it. So, so now I just took some uh, sheet metal, some really thin gauge sheet metal, and I actually just bent it all the way around um, on all sides. And it's just fastened to everything just with these two screws. Um, so that actually holds that on there. So if I ever need to take this shielding off, I just do undo those two screws and it'll come out. And then I've worked up a hinge. Uh, I've just used brake, old brake, steel brake line and just cut it up into little segments. And then you just weld opposing pieces to one side versus the other. Just jam a wire through it and you have a hinge. So now I just need to make some sort of a latch or something and a handle so you can actually hold this. So I came up with a handle that collapses into the lid but also locks it. So there's a little latching mechanism here. So when you shut it, you can carry it around. But as soon as you drop the handle, it actually unlocks the lid. What it does is it comes up, gravity pulls this forward. This locks into it and this locks under that lip. So gravity lets it fall. This locks it. Kind of random. Just a, a funky hinge you can carry it around. Drop it, open it. So the burning question, does it work? Hook up a little air hose. If you want a fitting that never comes off, this is a Haltech fitting. I'll put a link below. And it stays attached no matter what you're doing for, if you ever got air chuck anything. And we'll just put this in. See? Hey, just a fun little project. Don't forget to smash that like button. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks, guys. See you soon.